In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a tool that is going to spy and steal the content of your Instagram competitors automatically. And this tool is going to be super powerful because we're going to obtain weekly reports of the Instagram accounts that we want. And also, we're going to see the performance of all the posts that they have uploaded. And for this tool, we're going to be using Airtable as a database, Make.com for the automations, and RapidAPI for the input URLs. And I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can have access to this document where I explain how to build this system from A to Z. In the link, you are going to have access to my community. And inside the community, in the Classroom tab, you're going to find a classroom that is going to explain you how to build this software. This is the make.com scenario as you can see. And as I mentioned before, to build this tool, we're going to be using make.com and Airtable. And then this is the Airtable database. But we're going to start first with the Airtable database because it's actually our operation center and where we are going to input and receive all the information and metrics. And as you can see, there is four different tables. We have accounts, logs, posts, and authentication. In the accounts table, basically, we're going to include all the accounts that we want to track. And if we want to track an account, basically, we just need to change the status here. And then then basically say track. Then here we're also going to have this track log that basically is a link record to this table. Then we're going to have the profile button so basically we can have access to the Instagram profile as you can see. This is my profile. Then we're also going to have a created ad field that is going to be this one and then we're also going to have the account ID that is going to be basically the record ID. Last we're going to have a link record to the post table where we're going to link all the posts of that specific user. Then in the track logs table what we're going to have all the tracking that we do to the different users weekly. For example we have here that I basically did to my account on July 5th and then here I also have another one that I did to Alex Almos's account on July 5th and every week we're going to be including more and more records automatically to this table because for example if now there is three users that we want to track Borja Bayasa, Ormosi and Cristiano then at the end of the week we're going to include three track logs so basically the fields that we're using here is this formula field where basically we substitute all the spaces and all the special characters and then we create like an ID for that specific track then we're going to have a link record to the accounts table and then we're going to have a created ad field. We're also going to have a number field that is going to be the number of followers of that specific week and now this post field is going to be a field that is going to count all the posts that we have in that specific week. Then another field that we're going to have is this link to the previous week log. And why are we are doing this? Because if we have multiple weeks and we have multiple tracking, something that we want to do is to include the followers of the previous week. So with the follower of the previous week, we can calculate the increase or decrease in followers. But anyway, as you can see here, there is also a link record to the post table and in the post table basically we are going to be calculating all the average likes then as I mentioned before here we have this formula field where basically we have this formula and then here we have this lookup field where basically we say if we are currently tracking this user or not and here we're going to have a button field so in case that we want to access to the profile we can actually do it from there then the last field that we're going to have is a record ID field that in this case the name is log ID and basically we're going to use this formula mimicking the record ID okay then in the next table is going to be the post table where basically we are going to include all all the posts that we're going to scrape in a weekly base. So as you can see here, we also have this formula that is very similar to the one that we had in the track logs table, okay? With the difference that here, we're also including the post ID that as you can see is this one that we have here and also the date that this post has been posted. Then here, if we want, we want to go to the specific post, so for example, I'm going to go to this one that as you can see when I scraped it, it was 89K likes and now it's 92K. And then we're also going to have some other relevant metrics like the likes, the comments and the relative performance. And here we're also going to have the relative performance and this field is super important because what it's going to say to us is how good or bad a post has performed compared to the post of that specific week. This is the formula that we're going to be using and as you can see here we are referencing to the average log like that is a roll up field from the track logs table and coming back to the relative performance if we have values that are closer to one it means that we're going to have posts that are performing very well. In the other hand if we are posts that are below minus one or even lower it means that they didn't perform that well. But anyway here we also have a link record to the track logs table because that way we can bring all the average information from that specific track that is basically this one that we have here then here we also have a link record field to the accounts table that is actually the first one that we saw a created ad record and then the instagram post id that is the unique id that every post has on instagram now here in the authentication table we're going to have all the different values that are going to authenticate the http request in make.com so for example for the base id what we need to do is to go here to the url and basically select this part from here okay this app and then the code that you have. So for example, in my case, it could be this one. Then for accounts table ID, basically we need to go here. And instead of the first value that we have here, we have to select the second. And then we basically have to do for all the tables and then also for the rapid API token. And if you don't know what is rapid API, it's basically a library of endpoints that we can use in order to build apps like this one. In this case, the API that we're going to use is going to be this one. And I'm going to leave the link to this API and the endpoints that we need to use in the guide that I showed you before. So just make sure that you join the community and grab the guide. The only other thing that I'm going to 
information about Rapid API is how you can obtain your API key and how you can subscribe to the API. So as you can see, we're here on the main page of the API. And if we want to subscribe to this, basically we just have to click here. And I'm not gonna do it because I have done it in another account. And basically, if we want to obtain the API key, we just have to click in any of the endpoints and then check this value and copy. Okay. So basically, we just need to copy it and then include it here in get followers key and also in get post key. That in this case is going to be the same one. So now that we have seen all the different tables that we're going to have on our table, we're going to see the automation that is going to connect our table with main.com. And as you can see, this automation that we have over here is not complex at all. Basically, it's going to be scheduled once a week. That is going to be every Sunday at 11.45. And we're going to find this fine records step where we're going to bring all the values that we have in our authentication table. So then we can input them as variables in this script that I'm going to show you here. So if we want to see the script, basically, we need to go to this part and click on edit code. And as you can see, the script is basically this one. And I'm going to leave this script as well in the guide and community. And the only thing that you need to do is to make sure that we are inputting all the variables that we have here. This means that we are inputting as a variable the base ID, also the accounts table ID, the post table ID, the error table token, and basically all the different fields that we're going to need in our make.com scenario. So now we're going to take a look to the make.com scenario. And as you can see, there is two main routes. There is this upper route, and then there is this bottom route. But indeed, both of them are exactly the same. And the only effective difference that we're going to have is that in this right user stats, in the upper route, basically, we're going to be linking to the previous week log. And when in the bottom round, we're not going to be linking to any specific record. And you may think, why are we doing this? Well, the biggest difference here is that this route, we are using it when there is not previous track logs. And then this upper route, we're using it when there is previous track log. The other thing that I bet that you notice is that we are not using any air table mode. And I did it this way because this was a project for a client. What we achieved that way is that we actually just need to duplicate the air table database and then include all the IDs and keys. And then this scenario would be ready to go. And the main difference is that if we are using air table modules, whenever we want to update the connection, we're going to lose all the information. And here, as we're using HTTP requests in this step, in this step, also in this step, and this last step, and same here and here, we won't need to change anything else because everything is going to be changed in the air table side. But anyway, I'm going to be showing all the different steps. And if you want to use an air table model for this, it's also perfectly fine. But anyway, let's start from the beginning. As you can see here, the first step is to create a custom webhook. And in case that you want to create one, the only thing that you need to do here is to go here to webhooks and then click on custom webhook. Then you just need to create one add a new webhook with your webhook name and then copy this URL, okay? And then this URL is the URL that we're going to need to include here in our Airtable database. It's very important that we respect this question mark and also this symbol, okay? So basically, we include our webhook URL over here. So now let's go back to may.com. And then here, I'm going to delete this webhook. What we're going to do is to get the user to track. Basically, we're going to do this with this HTTP request. But in case that you want to use the Airtable modules, the only thing that you need to do here is to use an Airtable search a record module. This way, we're going to search all the records that have the status equal to track. And then we're going to use an iterator to basically separate all the data bundles. And once we have iterated all the data bundles, what we're going to do is to get the last load. And for this, basically, we're going to use this HTTP request that indeed is exactly the same as an Airtable search a record module, where basically we're using this formula account equal to fields, account name, and basically we are returning the record that has been created more recently. And we're going to do that because that is going to be the track log that we're going to be linking in the same table. So we can do the comparison between the previous week followers and the current week follower. So now, as you can see, there is going to be a router. And the only difference here is that in the upper route, this one basically we have already a track log from a previous week. And then the filter in the bottom route is basically this one. That basically means that there is no track logs. And consequently, it's the first time that we track that user. So I'm going to close this one. And then I'm going to show you this HTTP request. Because this HTTP request is going to be the request that we're going to be sending in order to get the followers of that specific user. And you may be wondering where all this information is coming from. And the answer to that is that all that information is coming from the authentication table. And the only thing that we need to do here is to write our endpoint URL, our host, and our key. And then that is going to be passed as a variable in this HTTP request. So if we want to duplicate the base in another Airtable account, basically, we just need to input the information in Airtable. And the only parameter that we need to pass here, basically this one, username, underscore, or, underscore, ID, underscore, or, underscore, URL. And basically, this is going to be the account name, OK? And what we're going to obtain here in this HTTP request is going to be the followers of that specific user. Then in the next request, we're going to use different variables. As you can see here, now it's get post URL, get post key, and now get post host. And as you can see here, if we go to Airtable, we're going to see that this get post URL also has a value here. That in this case is actually the same. But if we are using a different endpoint, we can also input it here. Then we're also going to have the host of the get post, and then we're also going to have the key of the get post. So as you can see, the only parameter that we're going to pass here is the same one. Username underscore or underscore ID underscore 
or underscore URL. And then the value is going to be the account name that we have obtained with this iterator. Then we just have to set the body type to raw and then the content type to JSON, application JSON. And then we're going to parse the response. And now with the next two modules, first we're going to write the user stats and then we're going to write the post stats. In the first one, basically, we're going to send a request to Airtable. And for that, we're going to be using this endpoint URL, where basically we're going to be using the base ID that, as you remember, is a variable that we have the store in Airtable and also the track logs table ID because basically we're going to send this request and we're going to write these records in the track logs table. So this request is going to be a post request and then here we're going to have authorization and the embedder Airtable token that as well is going to be a variable. Then content type application JSON and then body type raw content type application JSON and this is the actual request content that we need to send. So basically we need to send this JSON where basically we're going to be sending followers that is the follower count that we have obtained in this request, account ID that we have obtained in this request and then the previous week log that we have obtained in this request over here as you can see here. then the next step that we're going to do is to iterate over the post because when we are doing this http request that we have over here the get post stats we're going to receive the last 12 posts but we're going to receive the last 12 posts in a collection so we actually need to iterate over all those items so every post is a different object so basically we're going to iterate over the items that we receive in this request and then we're going to send another request to our table and in this case the request is going to be to the post table that's why we have the post tables idea over here this is also going to be a post request and then we're also going to have authorization better and the rt1 token then body type raw content type application json and then here in request content is very important that we actually pass this json and basically we're going to pass the likes the comment the account that we have scraped the instagram post id and the post data that we have obtained in this iterator that we have over here then the other value that we're going to pass is the track log that you see here so we can link the track of that week to the post that we have just scraped then the other thing that we need to do is to format the date in a format that is readable by air table and then that would be basically and with this whole system we're going to be able to track specific accounts and to see the metrics of their posts and everything is going to happen completely automatically every week and as i mentioned before if you want to have access to this specific document where i explain from a to z how to build and install these systems into your accounts in the link in the description you're going to have access to my community and inside the community you just go to the classroom tab and then you're going to have the classroom with the document explaining from a to z how to build this automation and inside the community you are also going to be able to find free and premium templates and also to connect with other automation builders. So that would be it for today and if you like the video please like and subscribe because it actually helps a lot.